God's grace and inspiration come suddenly from above in an unexpected hour preceded by the torments and temptations and storms. A pearl is born from a wound made in the body of a shellfish that lives in the depths of the sea. And the pearl of the Holy Week is the offspring of the pain that the church body lives throughout amidst the sea of tribulations and is manifested as a beauty of gratitude. And it shows that the, the Orthodox Church does theology with the totality of its being. It believes and lives the fact of the passion and resurrection of the Lord. The Holy Week, the week of the passion and resurrection, puts its stamp on the life of the Orthodox Church. In the previous days, we all watched with rapture in our churches the holy services, inimitable and unique. We have seen shocking things. And the most incredible thing is to see God weak in front of the malice of the world. A God who surrenders to the cross. A God who does not seem to benefit us because there is nothing that a weak God can offer us. And that's where our faith is tested. Do we want a God who will benefit us? Do we believe what, that God is useful to us? This was and will be the big question of the Holy Week, a question addressed to all of us. Why do we believe? Do we believe because we expect something from God? And if He does not give us, we also turn our face away from Him. Do we believe because He is, as we say, the higher power, because it wor He works wonders? Or is it because He loves us and we love Him? We're invited to answer these questions during Holy Week, but also throughout our lives every day and every opportunity. Only then we realize the meaning of the Passion and the life-bringing death. We realize the value of the cross, and that through the cross, joy comes to all the world. And we realize what it means, that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to enter into His glory. You realize that you have nothing but passions, pain, and a cross at your disposal. And he makes the cross a cause of joy for you and death a door leading to incorruption we believe in god not because he is powerful not because we can turn to him and ask him to satisfy our requests but because he has shown us that he loves us in the person of his son and through his sacrifice and he invites our hearts to express their love for God without going through the logic of reasoning. Only in this way, my dear ones, we will be able to understand why God was crucified. He was crucified because love had to conquer death. And precisely because of this, the resurrection, which will follow the crucifixion, will be proof that death can only be conquered in this way. And God does not want to give us, my brethren, in the person of Christ, anything less than victory over death. For this reason we can see in Christ the King of Glory, not in the resurrection but at the crucifixion, and as a corpse lying in supreme position, stretched out in the on the Epitaphion. This already shows the ethos of the Church. It reveals the ethos of the cross and resurrection. Because the hanged dead man is already the king of glory. He is not someone who tried to avoid punishment and was ultimately defeated by his enemies. Rather, he is the one who was raised up upon the cross of his on will, the one who willingly sacrifices himself in order to save the world by
by abolishing death. All our demands, all our aspirations, everything is fleeting. Everything is less significant. Victory over death is what matters. In the catechetical oration of St. John Chrysostom, which is read at the end of, the, of every Paschal Matins, it is not human logic that is speaking. It is the amazement of the age to come that breaks forth. The victory of life over death, the triumph of ineffable love over human injustice. It dissolves everything and amazes the just and the unjust, the living and those who have fallen away. He calls everyone to the joy of the resurrection. And in order to make this clear, he expresses it in positive terms by talking about all of you and in negative terms by talking about no one. Enter all of you into the joy of the Lord. Let all enjoy the feast of faith. And let no one go away hungry. Let no one lament his sins. Let no one fear death. Christ is risen. There is none left in the tomb. In the liturgical text of the Paschal Resurrection service, we say, the Lord is risen, and in rising, He raises up the whole world with Him, the human world, in the words of the Synaxarion of Pascha. In the Orthodox Church, the icon of the resurrection does not depict Christ smiling above the tomb as if He had accomplished some individualistic feat, but rather presents Him with a face so joyful that it appears at the same time sorrowful, He's shown pulling up those bound in shackles and drawing out all of the condemned from death into life and from darkness into light. And we sing at Pascha, now all things are filled with light, heaven, earth, and the infernal underworld. This joy born of the cross and the life that dawns from the tomb manifests the strength and the Catholicity of the Orthodox Church. All things dance together in the cross resurrection dance and sing in praise of God. Christ does not simply promise us resurrection. Instead, He does away with death for us. He gives you the power not to die. That is the message of resurrection, one small joy that laughs at death, a beauty that is recognized and experienced as salvation, a sober drunkness and dear-minded frenzy that destroys the conditions of corruptibility and fills all things with eternity. This grace, which is the surprise of deification and the gift of resurrection, is not a result of cleverness, asceticism, or virtue. Rather, it is a divine gift given suddenly to the humble and contrite person who does not commit outrageous acts of arrogance, but is stunned at mystery of the extreme love, humility, and sacrifice of the divine human Lord. So we come in, in the end to the explosion of light, the resurrection of life. Then he invites everyone, those who have fasted and those who have not fasted, to the great banquets, an explosion of life, everything turned upside down, a tsunami of life that belongs to paradise. Bars were destroyed gates were broken, tombs were opened, the dead arose. This is the only revolution in the world, the abolition of death. Christ is risen. In 
indeed he's risen.